If you haven't noticed, smartphone prices are out of control. Buying a new Samsung, Huawei, or Apple smartphone will easily set you back $1,000, if not more. Fortunately though, a few years back, OnePlus introduced the concept that a flagship smartphone doesn't need to be ridiculously expensive. Delivering a device which offers 90% of what the most expensive devices have to offer at a price that's dramatically lower. These days, the budget flagship segment has expanded quite a bit from just OnePlus's devices to include dozens of other options from Honor, Asus, Acer, Xiaomi, and many more. And then there's this one here, ZTE's Axon 10 Pro, which may actually be the best option of them all. I'm Nick Gray from Fandroid, and this is our review of the ZTE Axon 10 Pro. When it comes to its spec sheet, this phone checks all the right boxes. Since this is a flagship tier device, it is running on a Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 processor with 8GB of RAM, and then there's 256GB of storage with a micro SD card slot, which is actually becoming quite rare these days. There's a triple camera setup on the back with a 48 megapixel Sony sensor, 20 megapixel camera with an ultra wide lens, and then a 3x telephoto lens that's paired with an 8 megapixel sensor. Up front, there is a 20 megapixel selfie camera in the teardrop notch, which is cut out from the phone's 6.5 inch AMOLED display, which also includes an embedded fingerprint sensor. On the power side, you do get a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. But the real highlight here is the inclusion of wireless charging, which typically is only included on smartphones that cost $1,000 or more these days. And this phone here costs $550. And if you're willing to throw in an extra $50 though, you can bump up the eight gigabytes of RAM all the way to 12. When it comes to its design, the ZT Axon 10 Pro really isn't anything special, featuring an aluminum frame sandwiched between Gorilla Glass on the front and the back. And the blue color option here has been done quite a bit lately. That being said though, it is nice to see another color option besides the usual black and whites that we see on most devices. As with most ZTE smartphones, the build is refined and the fact that the third camera on the back of the phone isn't raised is a nice touch. The power button on the side of the phone falls perfectly where your thumb typically rests, but if you use the in-display fingerprint sensor to unlock the phone, which happens to work extremely well, you'll probably never use it that much. While the hardware is top-notch, ZTE has never really been known for its software. Over the years, the company has received a lot of criticism for its skinned versions of Android and software updates that come months too late. But the company has actually been working really hard to improve its track record here. On the 10 Pro, I was pleasantly surprised to see a nearly stock build of Android, which delivers a dramatically improved user experience over what ZTE had delivered in the past. To be truthful though, ZTE may have actually toned things down just a little bit too much, since all the customization options that you had before are no longer there. The launcher is pretty much stock, with the Google feed to the far left and a few customization options for transitions and the icon grid. The interface is fluid and fast, and ZTE has even replicated the Android 10 navigational gestures even though this phone is still running on Android 9. Like ZTE's Nubia branded phones, there is a dedicated gaming mode that's built into the phone that kills off background processes to ensure that the games that you're playing take full advantage of the phone's hardware. But honestly, it is a little bit of overkill since the hardware on this phone is superb. The 8GB of RAM is more than enough to keep 6-8 to eight applications running in the background even while you're playing your favorite game. And for those who are curious, in comparing this phone to the 12GB version of the OnePlus 7 Pro, I found that this phone's performance was overall just as good. Of course, playing games for hours on end can take a massive toll on a phone's battery life, but since this phone has a 4000mAh cell on the inside, users shouldn't be too worried. If you're a heavy gamer and consume a lot of media throughout the day, the Axon 10 Pro will get you through an entire day just fine, but you may want to plug it in at the end of the afternoon if you're planning on going out for the evening. Under regular use, I average 5-6 to six hours of screen on time over the course of a 14 hour day with a good 20% charge before I plug the phone in at night. And with Quick Charge 4.0, the phone's battery can charge from 0 to 100% in just over 90 minutes. Oh, and let's not forget about wireless charging, a feature that even OnePlus has deemed to be too expensive for its $750 smartphone. Personally, I'm a big fan, and who knows, ZTE may even throw in reverse wireless charging next time around. When it comes to the phone's 6.5 inch AMOLED display, I don't have any real major complaints. 
It does feature a curved panel just like some of the most expensive devices on the market do, which does add a little bit of an extra glare, but it's not too bad. The 1080 by 2340 pixel resolution is expected at this price point, and the panel is extremely bright, offering great visibility in direct sunlight. And it does support HDR10 as well, which offers a great viewing experience when you're sitting back and enjoying a movie or TV show. And to top things off, ZTE's also thrown in an always-on display mode for notifications and the time, but it would have been nice if there were a couple customization options thrown in as well. The biggest point of contention which typically differentiates phones in this category from true flagship devices is the camera experience. Now, we're not just talking hardware since a lot of phones these days, even $300 devices, have multi-sensor setups for their main cameras. We're talking about the actual image and video quality here. The versatility offered by the standard, ultra-wide, and 3x telephoto is pretty incredible, and the overall image quality isn't bad either. Images are sharp with great colors and white balance, but that being said though, ZTE really can't compete in this day of computational photography when devices like the Pixel 3 and the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 really offer incredible looking images. Now to be fair, these images aren't bad, not even close, but they do pale in comparison when you put them up against the best devices that are out there. If you enjoy taking selfies, you will get pretty good images out of the front-facing 20 megapixel camera when the lighting conditions are right, but don't expect miracles if you're taking images in low light conditions in a restaurant or at night. And since taking images in low light conditions with the main camera really isn't ideal on the auto mode, they've thrown in a dedicated night mode as well, which brightens up the scene and pulls in a lot more detail. So where does that leave us with the ZTE Axon 10 Pro? The hardware here is incredible and the software is good and performance is exactly what you would expect even out of a thousand dollar smartphone. And then you have a camera that's okay but could use a little bit of polish. As you can see, this $550 smartphone could go head to head with some of the most expensive devices on the market. It probably wouldn't win every single one of those matchups but that's perfectly fine when you know that you have an extra $400 just sitting in your wallet. The most surprising thing though is that this phone actually beats out OnePlus at its own game, offering flagship tier hardware and a clean software experience at a very, very appealing price, making the ZTE Axon 10 Pro the new king of the budget flagship smartphone segment. And that's definitely something I wasn't expecting when this phone showed up. <laughs>